r slash ask reddit. Doctors, therapist of reddit, do you have any no, that's not normal stories? If so, what abnormal habit, oddity did the patient have thinking it was normal? 50ish year old man who came in for chronic issue follow up, he brought his wife with him this time around. At the end of the visit, she says hey, tell the doc about that dot 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 thing you can do. He turns to me proudly and tells me that he can whistle from his penis. If he really pushed, he could blow gas from it. His wife insisted it wasn't normal, but he was certain most guys could. Turns out, he had a connection between his bowel and his bladder. Mom brings her kid in because the babysitter was concerned about these spells the child would have. Apparently, the child would have episodes where he would just blankly stare at them and not acknowledge whatever it is they were telling him, or whatever he was doing. The parents just thought he was being an asshole and not listening to them, or being absent-minded. The kid turned out to be having absence seizures. A younger gal who had come in for generalized abdominal pain that she experienced on and off for years, but just always wrote off to either menstrual cramps or bad food or life. We had asked her if her bowel movements were regular, and she said yes. At some point, someone was sharp enough to ask her how often she had bowel movements, to which she said, about once every two three weeks. She had been suffering from pretty severe constipation, but just thought it was normal to have BMs once to twice a month. I'm sure I have more, but I think I wrote enough for now. Ninja edit, oh yeah, I have a lot of stories involving skin lesions. Please people, no doctor will ever fault you for wanting to just get something looked at. There are a few easy ways to tell if you're looking at something potentially evil. So this guy could fart out of his dick? Yes, pretty much. It's actually not a condition that anyone would like, and should be surgically corrected immediately. You really don't want a way for bowel contents to get into your bladder, ha ha. This was a time I was told something I did wasn't normal. I was in physical therapy recovering from back surgery. My in-home physical therapist was having me do stretches and asked me to extend my leg as far as possible and straighten my knee. So I do this and my knee inverts, which to me was totally normal, but my PT was very surprised. She explained that was very abnormal and she had not seen hyperflexible knees like mine before. So now I know my wonky bird knees are not normal. Edit, it has been really great to find others who are also hypermobile. No one else in my friend, family group is like this. You might have Ehlers Danlos syndrome. I'm hypermobile as well and my doctor suspects I have it although that requires genetic testing. If you have soft, stretchy skin, you dislocate easily, or pain you should see a doctor. Yeah if it ever really started bothering me I would. Currently, it's mostly just interesting. Until that PT about three years ago I thought everyone was like that. Oh dot oh. A woman came to the hospital because she was feeling tired and casually mentioned the persistent vaginal bleeding she'd been dealing with for two months. She said it wasn't ever a large amount so she didn't think twice about it. Labs were done and her hemoglobin was 3.9. For context, that's low. Like, you should be dying low. But she looked perfectly fine. Okay, but what's a normal number? Like, 1113. 95 year old veteran 5 years in remission from kidney cancer. Came in with 72 years old wife for routine follow up. She wants to know if it's safe to have sex every day because she is worried about his health. Yup. 95 yo. Fucks every day. No Viagra. We just said, congratulations. Yes, sex every day is very good for your reproductive tract, penis or vagina. It keeps blood flow going and helps you maintain the function of your bits for as long as possible. Use it or lose it, essentially. And it doesn't have to be with someone else, either. Use it or lose it, essentially. And it doesn't have to be with someone else, either. So you're saying there's a ch- I was the patient, but when I went in for a routine physical the doctor poked my extended belly and asked how long it had been like that. I laughed and said, what? My beer belly? Oh, since I was 21 probably. Turned out that, no, the beer belly was a cyst that had grown really large and that was why my friends kept saying I looked pregnant.
I thought I just had really shitty friends. Had to have emergency surgery and for a week or so they did not know if it was a cyst or ovarian cancer. It was a pretty big scare. My sister had a massive umbilical hernia. She thought it was normal belly button if you're fat. From the other side of the therapy couch as a client, I once described a new emotion I was feeling that was really difficult to process. Turns out I was just fully experiencing sadness. I'd built a defense mechanism where I'd go straight from zero to angry, and whatever was trying to make me sad I'd just get angry about instead. So I'd never really spent time in the sadness area long enough to experience it properly. It usually flicked me straight through to anger at high speed. I can't imagine what it's like as a therapist to have a 33-year-old telling you about this weird new feeling, and you having to explain to them what a normal response sadness is. Hello, me. My therapist tells me that this is actually super common. After a while of avoiding unwanted emotions, your nervous system basically shrugs and says use it or lose it, and bypasses those emotions altogether. That's why it's been difficult to break the 060 cycle and access feeling of sadness. I was also 30 when I learned how to have a full spectrum of healthy emotions. What a ride. I was the patient. I had no idea that it wasn't normal to uncontrollably sob for two weeks out of every month, have breasts so sore I couldn't go downstairs, jiggle, and then have it all stop the day you start your period. It took me getting a female roommate at 30 for me to realize that wasn't typical. I asked my obgen after charting my symptoms for six months. PMDD, a depressive disorder that is tied to your menstruation. A change in birth control pills fixed it right up. He also looked at me like I was crazy for thinking that was normal for 16 years. I asked my mum after my diagnosis, oh yeah. Remember in high school? Your friends would come over and ask if you were crazy that day or not? No, mom. They didn't ask me that. Thanks for letting me know. I have PMDD too, I didn't realize how crazy I was until my husband forced me to go to the doctors at nearly 30 years old. Been on Prozac ever since and feeling a lot better. I'm a patient. Growing up I assumed I was struggling in school because I was just a stupid miserable fuck up. I had zero confidence in myself or anyone else. Sometimes I would go days without sleeping, other times I would sleep all day. I thought about my own death constantly. I truly believed that I was a flawed person and that it would always be that way. Turns out I actually have bipolar disorder. And thanks to medications and therapy, I am a normal functioning human now. Mostly, anyway lol. Same. But with inattentive ADHD. Not a doctor but when I was maybe 14 or 13 I remember describing to my primary how during my periods I would pass out from the pain, couldn't move or I would get sick, and told her a story about how I went on a trip to Italy and sometime in the middle of the flight became wildly sick to the point of terrifying the poor flight attendants, I'm so sorry flight attendants, bye, filling four puke bags, crawling to the back of the plane clutching my stomach, finding the doors locked attempting to use the first class bathroom so I could finish being sick, when denied entry just lay down in the aisle waiting for sweet sweet death to take me, it did not. Death has terrible customer service, and then passed out when we exited the plane. But periods are supposed to be painful right? The doctor was like honey you're supposed to experience some discomfort not be incapacitated anyway she put me on birth control and I've never been happier. I'm more disturbed they wouldn't let a 13 year old girl clearly suffering from some kind of debilitating illness go into first class to use their restroom. That's absolutely cruel. The guy in his twenties came in complaining of belly button problem. I examined him, he had an irritating scab inside the belly button caused by aggressive lint picking. But dude was sweaty and had a slight tremor. Looked like crap. When I asked how he was feeling overall he said oh okay I guess. Just a little tired, drank a little more this week than usual. Probably overdid it. I had to pry for details and turns out he drank a gallon of gin over the last three days and stopped drinking alcohol when he started vomiting large amounts of blood and pooping a mixture of bright red blood and dark sticky stuff, Melina digested blood. He was totally unaware of the fact that he was going through alcohol withdrawal, sweating, shaking, 
because he hadn't stopped drinking long enough in recent memory to experience symptoms. I sent him straight to the emergency room, where they found a tear in his esophagus that required immediate intervention, and he was admitted for inpatient alcohol detox. I read his hospital note, he still insisted that the ed doc examine his belly button. I love the note at the end, I don't care about my life. Just save my belly button. His belly button did, after all, potentially save his life by being scabby.